It's clear that uh, we are suffering a uh, uh, cheap uh, shortage. Uh, the most difficult will be probably in uh, March and April. It will normally uh, be better at the end of Q2. And the hypothesis we're doing today, that is our base scenario, is that in H2 will compensate the loss of production of H1. That is what the industry is saying. That is what Daimler said yesterday. And we think it's the most uh, uh, credible scenario today. Do you not think, though, Jacques, that this is the industry shooting itself in the foot, not organising its supply chain correctly and not forward gauging uh, the demand increase in the third and fourth quarters of last year and, of course, early this year as well? I'm pleased to say, though, that you're saying I, I see no impact from the chip shortage on your, own, on your own hybrid and electric product lines. That is what we say today for the time being, and it's a very dynamic situation, so we have to be cautious, but we have delivered all our customers so far, and looking at what is concerned about hybrid and uh, fuel, uh, BEV, uh, battery electric vehicle, we see so far no shortage, and that is obviously a good news, but our team is working very, very closely with our customers on one hand, with our suppliers in one hand, to mitigate uh, the situation as most as as most as we can. Jacques, on the back of supply chain shocks like this, you typically see a business reorganize so it doesn't happen again. What do you think the outcome will be, whether it's uh, your your company, industry peers, or the chip makers themselves? How do you think uh, the system could change so that there isn't a chip shortage like this in future? Until now, the supply chain has been extremely resilient. Uh, we are seeing today an incredible shortage, which is due to two phenomena. Probably one phenomena is that everybody has underestimated uh, the uh, outcome or the growth of the automotive industry after the total stop we suffered of in uh, Q2 last year. And the second is the competition of other businesses like uh, um, uh, consumer goods or 5G and so on. So that is a very uh, specific situation. We need to be better in forecasting. It has been very difficult to forecast in Q2 and Q3 what would be the needs. That is an overall industry topic. We need to forecast better. We need to work better between our customers and ourselves and towards our supplier. And the suppliers need to invest. And we have seen some investment which are forecasted, but that will not solve the few weeks ahead, a few months ahead, it will serve a longer term where our suppliers, our suppliers, suppliers need to invest not only in Taiwan, but invest in the US and invest in Europe in order to ease uh, the supply chain. Jacques, let me turn the focus to your order intake because we've seen a lot of businesses, a lot of sectors still hard hit and are waiting for some form of recovery. But if you take a look at your order intake, that has returned to pre-crisis levels in the second half at 13.3 billion euros. Just give us a sense of how strong the demand is and whether you see it continuing across the rest of 2021. So, you know, the order intake is new order that we take and we have two to three years of development that means that will impact our turnover in 2024 and 2025, but it's extremely important. We had a very low order intake in the first half of last year, obviously, because the wool industry was closed. We are coming back to a very high order intake in the second half of the year. And what we see now uh, in the very early months of 2021 is that the orders are back, that in the business is back on track exactly what we had and the momentum we had before the crisis. And when you speak about the order intake, innovation, that new product that we bring into the market is uh, close to 56% of our order intake. That means that all what we have invested in new businesses, in new ideas, in new products is really picking up, which is obviously uh, a very good uh, sign for our future growth and uh, profitability.